Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for October 29th, 2020. So, my goodness, yesterday was a pretty darn brutal day with the market gapping down and those bears piling on, just surging to the downside. All day long yesterday, there really was no um, relief from the selling as the market continued to respond to all this uncertainty out there and rising coronavirus um, infection numbers. Um, yesterday, um, here in the United States, um, infection numbers topped 80,000 new infections. And we got news that France and Germany are going into nationwide lockdowns. So that uncertainty continues to rise and concerns of a double dip um, recession are starting to reemerge. So what does that mean for this morning? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink? We may want an adult beverage this morning to get us through this and uh, settle in and let's get ready for the morning market prep video for Thursday morning. So we are looking at an interesting day today. We have an absolutely massive day of data coming our way, a big deluge of data. And unfortunately, some of the big market moving um, information is not likely to come, well, is not gonna come until after the bell today. We're going to hear from Amazon, Facebook, um, Google. Um, we have big tech reports after the bell. And it's going to be interesting to see how the market responds throughout the day as we wait for that. We also have some big data coming up um, in our economic calendar this morning. So we'll look at that in just a second. Let's take a look at the chart here and see what we can uh, um uh, see what we can see here in the chart. Obviously, the devastation yesterday was pretty substantial. And we have picked up a little bit of a price support level right in through here, trying to hold onto that level right now. You can see we have a very bearish looking overall pattern here in this chart. And that possibility that we could drift down below this level is substantial here in the Dow. Let's take a look at why that might be. Um, the 200 day moving average is relatively close. And as you can see that 200 day moving average and 500 day moving average could provide a good level of price support but I think there's a high probability that it will draw prices right down into that. Maybe not today, but um, in the next uh, few days, we could see a test down in that area. Of course, the question always remains, will we hold that as support? Now, what I gotta tell you is in the short term, we are extremely oversold at the moment, which would lend some credence to the possibility if we do tag this area down here, we could catch that possible bounce up, but it's really going to depend on how those big techs report. If you remember the Microsoft report, Microsoft reported well, but they guided lower and that added to the selling pressure here in Microsoft. Should we get anything less than spectacular reports out of these tech giants, um, that could add to the pressure here to the downside and the uncertainty heading into the weekend with the election only five days away with um, a coronavirus surging around the world. There is an awful lot of uncertainty uh, weighing on the market and you can kind of understand why um, the bears are uh, running hard right now. So be really careful here, guys. You know, one of the things that um, we tend to do as traders sometimes is we get up every morning and we turn on our computers and that means that we have to trade. We have to put money at risk. And I want to tell you, if you don't feel like you have an edge, you may be way better off to just shut off your computer, go find something more productive to do until we get past this uncertainty and protect your capital. Lots and lots of volatility in this market, lots of news driven events that could move us around significantly. So please, please be very, very careful and protect your capital. Let's take a look at the SPY, SPY, also in a pretty dramatic sell-off, but we do have a little bit better picture here. You can see our 200-day moving average is much further away 
And it would seem, at least at this point, to be kind of an unlikely sell-off that would have us reach all the way down there in the SPY. However, there is plenty of um, potential evidence that we could draw right down into this area pretty easily. So watch that for a potential level of price support. And let's keep in mind, guys, even if we do get a relief rally, that any relief rally is now ha has the challenges of all of the price resistance above. So even if we do catch that relief rally, be careful. We may be rallying right back in to any place in here where we could find more selling. So be really careful. Don't, don't be the sucker that rushes into this and buys right into the resistance area where we might find more sellers. Um, let's take a look at the Qs. QQQ also giving up its 50 day moving average in a really big way. Uh, technical damage here in the, the tech sector is really starting to grow. And as you can see, our eight exponential moving average crossing down through our bigger moving averages, we've created a pretty substantial level of price resistance now right here in the chart. So should we bounce back up, we'll wanna watch that level for that potential that uh, the bears could attack or have a line of defense right there in that area. Also, let's take a look. We are holding on, at least at this moment, to a bit of a price level of support right in here, a little bit higher than even the SPY. And you can see if we can hold in this area, we might be okay here on the NASDAQ. It's really gonna depend on those aftermarket reports, whether or not we will hang on to that area. Please keep in mind that we could easily drift down in and attack this area for a price support as well. It would seem unlikely, at least in this selling wave, that we could reach all the way down to the 200 that would be pretty extreme and we've seen that occur right we've seen that occur just last um, um, um earlier this year not i was gonna say last january but earlier this year you can see we we have seen attacks like that where we just fall like a rock i don't know that that's where we're at right now today but we should be um, cognizant of the, of the idea that that is possible. So watch that closely and just prepare carefully. If we take a look at IWM, now IWM had been doing a better job of holding up and I still think it is doing a better job of holding up. Notice we didn't get a massive selling wave um, in, that, um, in that move. We broke down below the 50 day moving average and our eight exponential moving average is still holding above that 50. So we still have that little bit of hope of a bounce back here in IWM. We need those financials to start picking up and the oil sector to start picking up to really help here. But right now I'm not seeing a whole lot of um, hope out there that they will do that. So watch that closely. Um, IWM could help us help lead us out of here. We'll want to keep an eye on that. It is the strongest, believe it or not, right now of the markets not selling off quite as hard. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now the VIX, as I've been mentioning, the major concern that I had is when we held a higher low and where that fear might come in. So there is that downtrend break. We rallied, held a higher low, held onto that 50, that 50 day moving average rallying here. And then we get that big old fear spike. Now, I'm not sure that that fear is quite over. And let's kind of keep in mind that we have a little bit of price support right in the chart right here. So any rest or pullback in the VIX that holds a higher low in here could really send us higher and maintain that upside trend. So watch that closely. I don't think we're out of the woods here yet overall. Um, it really is going to depend heavily on how well these tech giants report um, later on today. Let's take a look at T2122. This is that four week new high, new low ratio. And I got to tell you, I get more questions on this than probably anything else. This is nothing more than an indicator, guys, where you take those um, ratios and plot them on a chart. And you can see it's very, very reliable in the sense that when we reach up into these upper levels, we tend to see a sell off. And when we reach down into these lower levels, we tend to see a relief rally, a buying wave. 
And so right now we are down here in this bullish reversal zone. The question is whether or not we're going to have enough inspiration to really lift us off of that area. Notice that we can move down into these areas and we can set here for a while. Doesn't necessarily mean that we just because we're down here that we have to zoom back higher. We could just rest down here at this area as we wait on these big tech reports. If they report well, we could see that relief rally on Friday. If um, they happen to disappoint, kind of like Microsoft did, then um, we could see um, uh, that additional selling heading into the uncertainty of this weekend. So just be really careful here, everyone. Watch that closely. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar has um, quite a bit for us to chew on here. Um, notice we've got this GDP report. Now, consensus is expecting a nice improvement in that GDP. We'll have to watch that closely. Um, right now, we've got treasuries actually selling off a little bit um, in anticipation of that GDP. So watch that closely. That will be a big number today. And then, of course, jobless claims are always um, on the radar that we need to pay attention to because if they start to creep back up with coronavirus numbers surging, that would be a market moving event. So watch that close. Pending home sales, natural gas report, and then later on today we have the Fed balance sheet. But I don't think those will probably move the market around. It's going to be um, um, those tech giants reporting after the bell that's going to be uh, the inspiration for the market, uh, whether it be bullish or bearish inspiration. I can't tell you. So watch that close. Now on the earnings calendar today, guys, we just have a massive number of earnings. Over 250 companies reporting today. Um, there's no chance I can cover all of those companies. But if you want to see a full list of what I believe are the notable companies, click that link just before, just below the title of the video here. There'll be a link back to the morning blog and you can take a look at all of those companies reporting. So let's keep in mind, we have um, Alphabet. Um, we'll be reporting after the bell today. We've got Amazon. We have Facebook. We have Apple reporting after the bell today. Some really, really big reports that could move us around. And that's not all of the text that we have out there reporting. We have some of the, the COVID favorites right now. Um, ATVI, um, ATVI has done really, really well in COVID land, um, playing games and staying at home. Um, and it, it will be reporting today. We might want to keep an eye on that. There's several oil sector type stocks. Um, DVA will be reporting today. It looks like it is gapping. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. It could be moving lower this morning. Let's keep an eye on that. We've got MGM um, that will be reporting. We've got um, some beer makers. Coors will be reporting today. It looks like it's gapping up on its report. So lots and lots of reports out there, not to mention sh um, the Shake Shack, Shopify, Spotify, Starbucks, uh, Twitter, we have a huge day of market moving reports. So keep a close eye on this. Um, anything is possible. And as we have been talking, futures were bullish in the Dow. They have now slipped negative um, this morning. So a lot of back and forth here. Um, how we open this morning could really be determined um, by how those economic reports come out. So watch that closely this morning. So with that, everyone, let's take a look at a few stocks that might be setting up but if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could do me a favor, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. Remember, the purpose of these videos is not to provide any prediction. Um, not to provide any hype as to which way the market is going to go. In fact, that kind of stuff just drives me nuts because no one really knows what's going to happen with the market. Certainly, we can use technical analysis to, to, to improve our odds, but when we have so many data points coming our way and so much uncertainty, you have to realize that um, when you're playing in that market, it's more akin to gambling than it is to running a trading business. So think about that 
very closely when you decide this morning about the risk that you want to take or might take in this market. Now, there's a few things that I mentioned to the folks in, in Right Way Options yesterday and possible trades that may be coming. And let me go back here to um, the diamonds with um, the moving average. And please keep in mind, guys, that anything that I mention here um, as a possible trade or an idea or a stock is not a re recommendation to buy or sell any security. It's merely... Um, it's, it's merely some of the education that I provide, and I look at the charts and try to determine where risk might be best placed. So one of the things I've been watching here is obviously this huge implied volatility increase on this downside move. Should we come down in here and test that 200-day moving average, there is that outside possibility that we could bounce off of that. However, taking a directional long trade on that could be a little bit dangerous. So as an option trader, what I would prefer to do is maybe take a bullish put credit spread. So for example, taking advantage of that implied volatility. Yesterday I was looking at a bullish put credit spread that set up right about in here, looking for about a one third credit. That would be selling the 256, buying the 255. But that those numbers have changed guys because of the additional selling that came in yesterday i would um, be uh, right now i could set up a trade that would be lower even further down here with a bull put credit spread so i could maybe take some risk in this uh, giving myself plenty of cushion and allowing that high implied volatility to help me out on that trade and just assuming that eventually we're going to relax here a little bit and we'll get some kind of a relief rally. So there's an idea. You might take a look at some of those indexes or stocks that are really um, strongly sold off, maybe heading into some big levels of price support where you might be able to find some trades um, out there, but be very, very careful on how you do those. And if you don't understand anything about credit spreads, stay away from that idea. Do not, do not follow anybody's trade blindly. Do not race into the risk without understanding what you're doing. Um, that would be, um, insanity in my opinion let's take a look at some other stocks that are holding up and looking pretty decently take a look at roku roku has been able to maintain this upside trend notice that we're consolidating right in here and i've actually placed a price alert above this little consolidation as this kind of shifts its way over here toward the trend i want to keep an eye on this now we do have a problem here this is going to report on 11.5 and it may not have enough there may not be enough enough um, energy in the market to get us moving out of here before that um, earnings report. But keep an eye on Roku. It's holding up pretty well and this is a very constructive chart at the moment. Considering how dangerous the market is right now, this is a very constructive looking chart. Also take a look at some of the retail. Um, now retail got hit a little bit yesterday, pulling back, but retail's been holding up pretty strongly. Um, Walmart is one that I've uh, continued to watch. Now I hold this so I have a bias on this trade. Um, and actually I have held this um, since all the way back here. Right there was my first entry into Walmart and I continue to hold that trade um, as a long-term hold. But I added to that position over here. Um, obviously I am down right now on that addition to the trade. But watching this closely, um, retail has, has held up pretty well overall considering the damage in the tech se sector. We may wanna be keeping an eye on this. You might wanna look at some of those retail um, stocks trying to hang in there. Take a look at FCS. Now, FCX is one I've been watching for a re-entry. We had made an entry over here in Rightway Options and had a beautiful run up here in that chart. Watching this here, we broke through some resistance highs in that chart. You can see this pink line is a price alert. I'm waiting to see whether or not that's going to hold in here and start perking back up. Um, copper has some pretty good um, reasons to be showing strength. 
um, with all of the electric vehicles and solar power moving up so strongly right now. A lot of reason for copper to maybe move up. So keep a close eye on that. Um, that might be a place to look. Now, I, I mentioned yesterday the possibility of looking to some of the precious metals for a little bit of safety, but they really disappointed yesterday moving lower. They could sell off in the wave, just really get involved in the wave of a downside move, particularly if we start triggering any um, margin calls. If folks start receiving margin calls because of the major selling off going into the market, you can oftentimes see gold, silver, things like that. Um, holdings of those be sold off to raise capital to cover their margin positions. But watch that closely. It is still possible uh, when the market gets really scared, sometimes uh, these um, will be a place to pick up a little uh, safety. Other places you, that you might look for safety are some of the really old dividend paying type stocks. Take a look at stocks like um, um, General Mills. You might look at um, Colgate Palmolive. These had a strong selling wave yesterday, but these are big dividend payers and sometimes we'll see those surge back as people look for a little bit of safety in those. Another place that I think is a really good place to look might be in the utilities. Um, these are big dividend payers. Uh, folks may shift to some of those to try and look for some relative safety here in the market after this initial wave of selling. So watch that closely. Notice we have a very big level of price support here in um, that utility sector, so watch that closely. So there's a few ideas. Obviously, this is a really rough market to be thinking about going long, and I really would want to encourage you not to chase short at the moment. We're probably closer to some kind of a relief bounce than we are to um, um, you know, additional big wave of selling. That is assuming that those big tech giants don't disappoint us completely um, after the bell tonight. So everyone, just be really careful. Protect your capital. Remember, it's okay. One of the great reasons, the, one of the reasons we all became traders is for the freedom, the, the ability to control our own destiny. Well, controlling your own destiny today may be the best thing. Shut off that computer and go find something else to do that's more productive than watch this market. Um, so much uncertainty up through the election. Um, we don't have to trade. We don't have to trade. So keep that in mind. Everyone take care of yourself. Have a great day. We'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Wish you all the best.